So here we are on Invalidenstrasse in Berlin and this river and I've chosen a good time to film this haven't I with um, Feuerwehr going past and all the good German drivers they're making a Rettungsgasse a um, through thoroughfare for emergency vehicles to go through anyway so this river is on Invalidenstrasse and about 30 years ago it was a, a very important part of Germany because this was the border to East and West Berlin we have East Berlin on the left side and West Berlin on the right side and this was sort of like um, a neutral zone between East and West Berlin so here you have East Berlin on the right there and West Berlin on the left here I'll go across to the other side in a moment but that's the uh, the border there to east and west so here we have the river again I'm sorry I don't know what the name of the river is but this is the west Berlin side and this is the east Berlin side so I don't know if these buildings were here then most likely they were but you can see a bit of a difference so if you could swim across this river into West Berlin then you then you were free really and a couple of people did actually do it I think in the last few months the Berlin Wall was up um, anyway that was in Validenstrasse and let's go to our next stop so this area I'm walking in one of the walls on the eastern side would have been around here somewhere East Berlin on the left West Berlin across the river there so there would have been one wall around here somewhere and I'm not sure whereabouts but it would have been somewhere around here according to a map I've got on Google Maps So, most likely it would have followed this path. So, this is all East Berlin side here. And the wall, the East wall would have been around here somewhere. And then all of this would have been a killing zone. All of this water. That's West Berlin on that side. Um, and there's my hotel, and there's some uh, funny graffiti. But that's, this is, if the East Germans could see over the wall, this is what they, well, they wouldn't have seen the train station. That was only built in the last uh, 20 years, I think. But this is, this would have been their view from East Berlin. So now we're at Alexanderufa. Alexanderufa. And all of these buildings here are standing in the, the killing in the neutral zone in the no man's land. It was a huge section. 
So, right there, that's where we are. So, all of this would have been empty land, probably would have been landmines, it would have been a killing zone. So now, we're still in East Germany, we're, well, we're in the no man's land, on the corner of Kapelle Ufa and Alexander Ufa. I'll just show you where we are, right there, and all of this was a no man's land, up to the shore. I don't know if there was a wall there on that shore or not. Um, in fact, I don't know if, if that might have been it or not. Um, I'd have to check though. But all of this river up to... Actually, where this bridge here ends, on the opposite side, from there all the way across, that was the edge of the no man's land. There. And it ran from that shore bank all the way along the shore bank. So opposite that is West Germany. And all of that from here onwards is all East Germany. It's all in the, the no man's land. So none of this would have been here. None of these buildings. It would have just been a plain. Lots of guards and lots of things that could kill you. So, I found the East German Wall. I'd walked over it. This is where it used to run. It used to run all the way along that way. So this is, I believe, as far as um, East Germans could get to West Germany. So we're on Reinhardtstraße. Right there. Von Prinzen zur uh, Brücke. And that's the East German side. Sorry, the East Berlin side. No man's land. And West Berlin over there. And that's Bundestag, over there, and back over to East Berlin, and uh, none of these buildings would have been here. Oh, it's one of those horseless carriages. There we go, he must be an East German. So now we're in West Berlin, looking across the river to East Berlin. So here we are just to the north of the Reichstadt Gebäude in West Berlin. There's the river. And over there is East Berlin. Now, it actually extended, this is actually where the border was um, for East Berlin, that line there, following up there. But the no man zone extended all the way over there for up until that bridge. Um, and then continued around. So now we're going to head off to Brandenburg, Brandenburger Tour, and continue from there. And that's in this direction here. So this is on at the the Reichstagebäude. I believe it's a part of the original wall. that they've preserved
before it was upgraded to that uh, concrete wall that you guys know about. Now the no man's zone actually existed in this area here. Um, I believe this was the start of the no man's zone. That's West Berlin on this side. And that's the no man's zone up to there and then the eastern border. So now we're in West Berlin and we're in the no man's zone. So here's the Reichstag Gebäude in West Berlin. This is the no man's zone and East Berlin. And this is where the wall ran. From 1961 to 1989, all the way down there to the Reichstag, uh, to uh, Brandenburger Tour, Brandenburg Gate, and that's where we're heading next. So there's the Reichstag Gebäude and this is where the wall ran. We're just near Brandenburger Tor. But then the wall turned 90 degrees and looped around all there and around the back. That's as close as it got to Brandenburger Tor. So I'm not quite sure what ha why that happened. But Brandenburger Tor was in East Berlin, I believe. So there's Reichstag's Gebäude, and that's where the wall went around. All along there. And then continued down that street. And this is Brandenburger Tor. Brandenburg Gates. So here we are in formerly East Berlin on the East Berlin side of Brandenburger Gate. Here we have the French Embassy. I think that's the Italian Embassy over there. This is the United States Embassy and if you go around that corner, sorry no, to the left of that, if you go around the corner after that building of the green roof and turn right you'll come across the, the British Embassy. Quick, we're escaping East Berlin. We're escaping into West Berlin. Quick, run! And we've made it. Well, not really. The wall's just over there, but I'm out of breath. But here you see again where the wall used to run goes around that loop and then it turns right and continues along this street here. West Berlin on the right and East Berlin on the left. Now we're walking along Elbertstrasse. East Berlin on the left. That's where the wall used to run over there, West Berlin in the woods. And all of this from here onwards to the left. There wouldn't have been any buildings here. This would have been the no man's zone. So, and this stretches for about a, about a block and a half. And over there you've got the memorial 
for the murdered Jews. Just beyond there you've got the US Embassy. I won't film the guards, they might not like that. Yeah. So this is all no man's land. The Jewish memorial there. I went there yesterday actually, uh, to the museum underneath. Uh, very emotional, but from a different conflict. So there's Brandenburg tour in the background. This is where the wall ran. All the way along there. And if you were to look at it, not knowing what it was, you would completely miss it. Um, 30 years ago it was a different story. So we have West Berlin on the right, East Berlin on the left, with a memorial for the murdered Jews. So here we go on Lenstrasse just over there. There's the wall. And all from here all the way over to where those two buildings are and maybe even a bit further was the no man zone so this was all flat there was barbed wire there was probably landmines there was all sorts of spikes in the ground you would not be able to get through this without one being detected or two being shot dead um yeah so There we go. All of these buildings, they didn't exist until after 1989 when the wall came down. Here we are at Lennonstrasse. There's the wall. And if you ever wanted, there's a cafe here. Where would you like to sit, sir? In the East Berlin or the West Berlin side of the cafe? I should explain that that cafe did not exist when the Berlin Wall was up um, by order of truth. And here we are at Potsdamer Platz. There's the path of the Berlin Wall. And here's some sections that have been preserved of the wall. And probably wondering what all of these m spots are. Well, if you really must know, it's probably 30 years worth of chewing gum that people have deposited on there. There's your strawberry and your mint flavours, cherry. A two euro cent coin. <coughs> yeah, chewing gum. <coughs> that would have been on the eastern side, I think. And this is a church that was demolished, that was in the no man's land. 1961, people were escaping through their apartment window to the pavement. And that's where the wall continues. Mm -hmm. 
So if this bus wasn't here, this would you would see Potsdamer um, Bahnhof, and the wall would run along here and then turn this way, running this way, and then it would do another left-hand turn. Here are some more remains of the wall. We are on the East German side, uh, the East Berlin side. No chewing gum on these segments. East Berlin and West Berlin. So this is Stresmannstrasse. We have Brandenburg Tour over in that direction. This is East Berlin. And this would have been a no man zone as well. And West Berlin on this side. So this would have been a killing zone. If you were been here 30 years ago, you would have been dead by now. And here's the wall again. It took a brief detour through this building here. Stresmannstrasse here, the no-go zone. West Berlin on that side. And East Berlin on this side. With this street being the, the no-man zone. So this is Stresmannstrasse. And the wall turns off to the left to Niederkirchnerstrasse and continues on that way. It's actually a bit more narrower. It's probably only about 20 or 30 meters now, the, uh, the no man zone. So the width of this uh, street. So, it's Tuesday the 17th of September. Um, here we are at Bernauer Straße in Berlin and this is where the wall continued, in that direction, um, sorry, in the opposite direction is um, the um, Brandenburg Gate. In this direction, however, the wall continues on, but in this section they've preserved the no man zone between East and West Berlin. And it's really fascinating because they've kept part of the original wall and I think one of the guard towers as well. I think this is a map. Yeah, so this is how it would have looked. Um, so we're standing right there where the white dot is and this is Bernauer, Bernauer Strasse. All along there. So... There we go, and I don't think there would have been grass. This here represents the signal fence. If you were to cross that, a signal would be sent to one of the guard towers, and the guards would be alerted. This is another wall here, Hinterland Mower. And possibly this section I'm not sure, would have been known as, um, I can't remember, but they had spikes out of the ground. So if you were to walk on them, you'd probably tread on a, um, a spike like in Home Alone movie. I don't know if this wall is the existing one or not, but it could have been. But it represents sort of the, the amount of space you had between the two walls. It's, uh, it's really incredible. So it's probably maybe a hundred meters from wall to wall that the um, the no man zone consisted of. So there you go. And they got some gardeners here, so they're preserving this, which is really good. Um, it should be left as is um, for future um, for future generations to appreciate what went on here. Um, 40, 50, 60 years ago now, 1961. There we go. 
So let's just say that this was the wall and I will manage to scale the height which is about three point something meters. Jump over the fence. If I wasn't spotted by the tower guards by now, I'd have a pretty good chance. But a lot of the sand here, there used to be sand, it would leave tracks and would be freshly um, ploughed so that you could see tracks straight away. We're nearly halfway there now. I'm not quite sure what other obstacles would have been here, but this is the signal wire. So if I were to step on that, the guards would in that tower over there would be immediately alerted to my presence. And then maybe there'd be a, a ditch here, or maybe some spikes in the ground. That would hurt a bit. So there'd be another fence about here that I'd have to climb. And another one, and possibly landmines, possibly trip wires with shotguns, which were actually removed after several years. And then if I were to get this far without being detected, which is highly unlikely, I'd have to scale another fence, possibly the same height as the other one, or possibly this height. Um, so the chances of covering this sort of area without being detected by the guards was near impossible. Um, I don't think there were any crossings of this distance um, without using like a tight rope that was used several times. Um, ladders were used to get across in the early stages but this would have been impossible to cross um, around the time that the wall stood here. So this is what it would have looked like in late 1989 between west and east. And here's an aerial photo, that's where we are at the moment. So you've got the inner wall, you've got the signal fence, you've got the patrol road, you've got the watchtower which we'll go look at later on. And you've got another watchtower there, but I think that uh, that has been removed. So there you go. Now, this graffiti obviously was added after the wall came down, because it's inside the no man's land. And the reason why I know that it wasn't actually turned around is because if you look on this side, you will see the L shape of the wall. And that was always on the eastern side of the wall because if a truck or anything came to crash through, the weight of the truck would stop the wall from tipping over. And they actually tried this with a T-34 tank and tried to get through. They actually had a uh, like a test bench, a testing area for this wall, this latest generation of the wall and they could not get through the wall with a t-34 tank that's how well designed it was um so let me just cross back into no man's land i don't know if this rebar is original or not um it could be um but there you go we'll have another look and these are the remains of the street that used to run through here and there's also a the remains of a guard tower here, which I'll show you quickly. Is it this one? Yeah, so this was this was the original guard house between 1967 and 1969. Um, so that's all that remains from it. So what you're seeing over here is a memorial to all the people that died between 1961 and 1989. Um, a lot of these people died trying to cross the wall, 98 of them, um, but a lot of them died because they'd lost hope and they, unfortunately, they took their own life. Um, there's a lot of people here. It's, it's really, really amazing. It's a baby. Really sad. Let's 
was one of the first that died, I think. 28th, uh, 22nd of August 1961. And then on the other side, you've got... Photos of eight border guards that also died during that time. Don't know which ones they were though. Hundred and thirty-six people that they know of. There could have been more. I wonder how many died in this area. So these light posts, I don't know if they were original, but that's probably what it would have looked like while the wall was standing. This place would have been so brightly lit, it would have been like daytime. And the brothers that actually crossed the wall on a zip line, they had this these lights as an advantage because any guards on the ground looking up, all they would have seen was these strong arc lights. They wouldn't have been able to see the zip line just beyond the lights, and that gave them the great advantage of being invisible. So you'll notice at the top of these of this wall, there's this section here, and that was actually concrete pipe put on top to make it harder to climb over. Uh, and in some instances, that was actually broken and removed so that people could climb over the wall. So that's about two meters there, so three meters something. But I think it was a little higher than three meters. And this section of the wall is relatively clean. There's no graffiti on it. Um, so I'm not sure if it was rebuilt or whether it was actually like that. So this is on the western side, I'm not sure if there was another wall here, but there's actually a cemetery here which was open to both sides at separate times. Anyway, so this is one, this is one of the last walls and this is one of the, the original guard towers that was in place and it was preserved after the wall came down. So that's one of many different designs of guard towers. And if my camera would focus a little better, you would be able to see, but maybe if I zoom in, that's better. So I don't know what we're seeing there. There's the guard tower. This is maybe what the West Berliners saw through little gaps because obviously it it wasn't so much the West Berliners trying to get into east, it was the other way around. So maybe security wasn't as tight on that side.